fiery horse for the speed of light, the cloud of dust, and a hearty high o silver, the Lone Ranger. <laughs> Faithful Indian companion Tonto, the daring and resourceful masked rider of the plains, led the fight for law and order in the early western United States. Nowhere in the pages of history can one find a greater champion of justice. Return with us now to those thrilling days of yesteryear. From out of the past come the thundering hoofbeats of the great horse Silver. The Lone Ranger rides again. On Silver! Let's go, big fellow! I'm Silver! A small southwestern town of Rio Vegas, situated near the river, and a scant half mile from Fort Craddock, had been built originally by the Spanish conquistadors. And true to old world custom, it was still surrounded on all four sides by a high adobe wall. Huge iron bound wooden gates provided the only entrances and exits. And it was through one of these gates that a strange conveyance made its way one afternoon in late summer. Get up, you hybrid spawns of Satan! Get up! A large canvas-covered spring wagon pulled by a team of reluctant mules was driven by a portly, pleasant-faced man wearing a tall beaver hat. Oscar Merriweather, salesman extraordinary, reined his team to a halt directly in front of Joshua Pratt's general store. Oh! Oh, there! Oh! Joshua! Hey, Josh! Merriweather! Oscar Merriweather! I might have known it was you! Nobody in seven states has got a foghorn voice like yours, unless it's one of them jugheads you're driving. See, the critter agrees with me. Mm, I should resent that remark from both of you. I haven't but seen I'll... you in quite a spell, Oscar. What you doing down this way? Surely, Mr. Pratt, you haven't forgotten that a traveling representative for the Merriweather Wholesale Mercantile Company never disappoints a customer. Oh, well, I... Neither snow, nor rain, nor heat, nor gloom of night stays these couriers from the swift accomplishment of their appointed routes. <laughs> it ain't snow to rain down here in one thirty years. More's the pity. Uh, what you selling this time, Merriweather? It isn't what I'm selling, Mr. Pratt. It's the fact that I offer you unparalleled opportunity to purchase extraordinary merchandise at bargain prices. Ain't so sure about that. Now, what do you need? Tinware, cotton goods, oil cloth, mustard seed, wooden legs, buggy bolts? No, I... Fine uh... paintings, carpet bags, bedspreads, iron plows, fascinators, ladies' hats, valentines, butter churns? No, I... Uh... Books! That's what you need. Books! Joshua, I'm offering a complete 12-volume set of the Merriweather Classics. All of the wisdom, romance, history, and philosophy of the ages for only $2.40. Oh, no, most of my customers can't read. And besides that... Can't read? Then they must write. I have a special item just for that purpose. Something you should stock up on right away. Pens, Joshua. Steel pens. Everybody needs a pen. Write a letter home to mother. Write one to your sister, to your brother. Write to your congressman. Oh, Ru shut up. 
I ain't going to buy any pesky steel pens, and you know it. Very well, Joshua. You forced me to unveil the item I had constructed especially for you. What do you mean? You'll notice that the body of my wagon is a little different this trip. Canvas curtains on both sides. Uh, what's the idea? It's inside the wagon. I'll pull back the curtain. Show you. What's that? A life-size stuffed horse. Oh, not stuffed. Oh. A wooden horse. A giant true-to-life replica of every gallant steed who ever lived. Notice the artistry of construction. Full-muscled back and legs. Flowing mane and tail and genuine rhinestone eyes. Truly a magnificent animal. Of all that... What in damnation is the idea of bringing a fake wooden horse down here to Rio Vegas? For you, Joshua. Me? I don't want to buy any fool contraption like that. I can see you don't understand. Oh. You need this wooden horse mounted right here in front of your store. All the big emporiums in the East have one. Why? Don't make any sense. As a progressive businessman, you've got to advertise. Let the people know you sell harness, buggy whips, bridles, curry combs, everything for a horse. What better way to tell them than by placing this effigy of Pegasus in front of your store? If that ain't the most dead blamed local ID I ever heard of. There are a hundred other good reasons why you should buy it, Joshua. No. I'll... No, you won't, Merriweather. I've been fooled by your slick line of gab before. Talking me into buying truck I don't need and can't Joshua. sell. Joshua. How about the last time you was here? Sold me 60 barrels of coal oil. Mm-hmm. And they're still a-setting back there in the storeroom. <laughs> well, uh... Uh, maybe that kerosene order was a little, uh, shall we say, far-sighted. But this wooden horse is something... No, sir, not on your life. If you want to sell that fake critter, take him over to the West Wall. There's a band of Kiowa Indians over there. They might buy it. Mm, I noticed those Indians when I drove in. How come they're camped inside the wall? Oh, nothing wrong with that. They're harmless redskins. They stop here every year to patch the tents and do some trading. Oh, I see. Uh, take your fancy wooden horse over there. Maybe you... What in the world was that? Cow punchers letting off steam, I suppose. Eh? No, it wasn't. Those hyenas are part of Monty Steele's gang. Monty Steele? You mean the outlaw? Well, I thought... I mean, I heard he was in jail. Right here in Rio Vegas. Yeah, he's supposed to be jailed, but there's something mighty queer going on here in town. Why, I don't understand. If Marty Steele is in jail, how come he and his gang of cutthroats ride in and out of here whenever they please? Well, I'm sure I don't know. That question's been bothering me for quite a spell. And by Juniper, I'm going to get the answer to it right now. How? I'm going to walk up to the courthouse and see Bill Donegan, our combination sheriff and mayor. You want to come along? Sure. Why not? Good afternoon, Sheriff. Or should I say, Your Honor, Mayor Donegan. Listen, Monty, you and your gang shouldn't ride down Main Street in broad daylight shooting off guns. Oh, you heard us, huh? <laughs> Just glad to be back, that's all. We put in a hard night's work last night over in Shelton County. What was it? Train robbery or cattle rustling? Now, Sheriff, that's a professional secret. It's got to stop. It can't go on. Yeah? Why can't it? You said all you wanted to do was hold up here in town for a few days. Well? You've been here almost a month. And instead of five or six men using my jail for a hideout, there must be 50 down there. Got any objections? Yes, I have. I'm going to see... Now, wait a minute, Dunnigan. You're dealing with Monty Steele, not one of your ten-star deputies. But, Monty... I put 5,000 in gold on the line. And all I asked you to do was arrest all of us. Sure. I was loco enough to sell out to an outlaw. I know that now. Arrest the gang so they can use the town as headquarters. You know the law from other counties can't touch you as long as you're technically under arrest here. <laughs> Just rolling on, huh? Why, if, if this keeps up, you'll have so many gunslingers in here, you'll take over the town. It's already happened, Sheriff. What? What do you mean? From here on out, you're taking orders from me. I, I won't do it. I'll tell everybody what's going on. Sit I'll down. Oh. Now listen to me, Tim Star. Oh, excuse me, Sheriff. Oh, what is it, Zeke? A couple of gents outside want to see you. Who are they? Joshua Pratt, a friend of his. Joshua. Oh, tell him I'm busy. I can't Now, wait. Him. Of course the sheriff will see the jeans. Tell him to come in. All right. But I can't... Listen, can. I don't know what these Jaspers want, but be sure you talk straight. I'm mighty handy with this shooting. Right in there. Hi, Sheriff. Hi. Uh, 
Just fine, Joshua. Meet a friend of mine, traveling salesman, Oscar Merriweather. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Merriweather. Pleasure's mine, Sheriff. And uh, this is Mr. Steele, Monty Steele. Hiya, gents. I thought I recognized the varmint. Ain't he supposed to be in jail? Well, uh, you see, I brought Monty over here to the office to ask him some questions. Good idea. I want to ask a few myself. You uh, do? What's on your mind, Joshua? Same thing that's on the mind of every other law-abiding citizen in Rio Vegas. What's the idea of letting sidewinders like Monty Steele and his skunks run loose? Why, I don't know what you mean. Oh, yes, you do. The town's running over with gunslingers. The scum of the country rides in and out of here like they own the place. Do they? No, no, you're mistaken. Get I am, Bill Donegan. I've known you for 20 years, and I've never seen you as nervous as you are right this minute. <laughs> Maybe I can explain the situation. <laughs> Maybe. You see, uh, Sheriff Donegan ain't feeling so well. He's going to take a long rest. And he's appointed me as chief deputy. You? <laughs> no, Joshua. That's a lie. I made a Shut mistake. Shut up. You're right. The town is full of scum. They've taken it over. Oh. Joshua, this this outlaw, or whoever he is, shot... Him. Murdered him, you mean? Shot Bill down in cold blood. And by Juniper, I'm... Get your claws up, both of you. <laughs> hey, Bex. Bex, come here. Yeah, Marty? The payoff came sooner than I figured. Cover these hombres and march them down to jail. Sure. All right, gents. Get moving. You dirty, murdering pole cats. Don't the... talk, mister. Move. And Bex, tell her frying to get all the boys together. Close the gates of this burg and post guards on the wall. Yeah. All right, let's go, you two. Put your hands down now. No need to let me rest with the others and know what's going on. Remember, I'm right behind you. Any funny moves, and I'll send both of you hopping for a harp. Miss Savvy? Yeah, your meaning is very clear. Oscar, I'm packing a gun in my shoulder holster. There was only some way to... There is. We'll pass my team and wagon in a minute. Those mules can run if they have to. Uh -huh. You make the play, and I'll draw down on this buzzard behind Stop us. Stop gabbing. Neither of you is going to do anything. Uh, no! Hey, what the... Hey, eat some lead, you dirty cut! No! Climb up, Joshua. Uh, up on the front seat. Yeah. And get those jug heads started. Get up! Burn the wind! You must be gotten... Whip them up, Mary Weather! Whip them up! Monty Steele will have 50 of his hyenas on our trail. If Which way? Wait. What's the shortest way out? East gate and hurry. Run, you Missouri muttonheads. Run. Ranger and Tonto guided their horses carefully along a narrow trail not far from Rio Vegas. Suddenly, the masked man called a halt. Oh, who's oh, 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 fellow? Oh, oh, fellow. What matter, Kimasabi? Why we stop here? See that cloud of dust up ahead, Tonto? Ah. Can you make it out? Oh, we're plenty far away. Me not... Oh, me see now. Two cloud of dust. Yes, I believe you're right. Looks like a team and wagon in front. Saddle horses behind it. Ah, them come plenty fast. Should we get off trail? Yes, we'll let them pass. But I'm curious to... Uh, two feller on wagon. One of them have gun. Watch out, Toto. He thinks we're going to stop him and he'll shoot his way through. Pull up, everybody! Ho, 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 ho. Bless me if it isn't more outlaws. One of them wearing a mask. Yeah, but our team's winded and we've got to keep it going. Go ahead. We won't stop you. You're dead blamed right, you won't. See this gun? What about it? Climb off your saddle horses. Here's where you trade them for a team of mules. The curtain falls on the first act of our Lone Ranger story. Before the next exciting scenes, please permit us to pause for just a few moments.
now to continue our story. Joshua leveled his gun at the masked man and the Indian, then repeated his command. Hey, shit, slide off them horses. We need them. So do we. Arguing with these outlaws, Joshua, isn't getting us to the United States Marshal. Steele's gang is right behind us. We'll be caught in the middle. I ain't going to argue with him. Get off them now. Oh, my hand. You're not hurt. I just knocked down your gun. Oh, I guess it's no use. We made a good try. Who are those men coming up? You ought to know. Outlaws are all the same breed. Did I hear you say you were hunting for a United States Marshal. Sure, and we'd have made it if it hadn't been for Merriweather's crowbait mules. Please. Kimasabi, fellows on saddle horses come plenty fast. Yes, I think. Quick, drive your wagon off the trail behind those trees. What do you mean? Don't ask questions. Hurry. Well, I... get up there. Ride down the trail, Tonto. Lose this gang and double back. Ah, uh, get him on, scout. One silver. <laughs> is a good place to stop. Oh, 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 oh. oh there. Oh, oh. Good. Steady, big fella. Now we can wait here till Tonto gets back. Tonto? Who's that? My Indian friend who led those men away from your wagon. Well, climb down from that seat. We'll rest a while. Stranger, do you mind telling me who you are? Yeah. You look like an owl hoot, but you don't act like one. I'm not an owl, no. But I would like to know why you were so anxious to find a United States Marshal. To tell him about Monty Steele and what's going on in Rio Vegas. Monty Steele? I thought he was in jail. He was. I mean, he is, but he don't mean anything. That's so? Tell me about it. Uh, I still can't figure you out, stranger. Seems like... Oh, well, Merriweather and I couldn't be any worse off. Merriweather? That's Oscar here. Oh? I'm Joshua Pratt. Own the mercantile store in Rio Vegas. This whole thing came to a head about... Monty Steele murdered the sheriff? Sure. Oh, it's gone. Oh, fella. Oh, oh fella. Did you oh. lose him, Tonto? Uh, uh, he takes high trail. Double back. Good. This is amazing, Joshua. These two men here, they must be some kind of outlaws, but they're trying to help us. That's right. Uh, if both of you saw Monty Steele murder a man, it's enough evidence to hang him in any court. Sure, but since he's taken over the local law, only a U.S. Marshal could arrest him. It'll take more than one Marshal to corral that gang in Rio Vegas. It's a job for the army. Say, that's an idea. Maybe we could get word to the soldiers at Fort Craddock. Enough troopers I to do I think you'll find that the United States Army won't in- interfere with county or state law. Unless it's something that affects them directly. Oh, uh, yes, I guess you're right. Seems a shame with the fort only half a mile down the river. You said you heard Monty Steele order the town gates closed and guards posted? Yeah, and the walls around Rio Vegas are 20 feet high. Hmm. Makes it even more complicated. Oh, dead blasted, Merriweather. If you had only been trying to sell me an iron cannon instead of a wooden horse, it would be some help to us now. Well, well What's I... that about a wooden horse? It's bolted to the floor of my wagon. You see, I wanted Joshua to put it in front of his yeah, store. Yeah, but I so... was too smart for you. I ain't forgetting those 60 barrels of coal oil you fast talked me into buying. They've been sitting in my storeroom ever since. All the lamps in Texas wouldn't use that much coal oil. Do you, uh, do you mind if I take a look at the wooden horse? Oh, not at all. Come on, I'll show you. There we are. Hmm. Very good imitation. I wonder. Joshua wouldn't believe me when I yes, told him. Yes, that's it. At least it's worth a trial. What are you talking about? Joshua, isn't the back end of your store close to the river? Right above it. Why? And the river flows right through the Fort Craddock stockade, doesn't it? Yeah, I guess it does. Good. And Tonto and I'll take a chance on getting inside Rio Vegas. With all of Monty's gunhawks patrolling the walls? Oh, you wouldn't have a prayer, stranger. Maybe we will. You'll help me tear down the canvas sides on this wagon and perform a major operation on the horse. Have you gone loco? That's exactly what the Trojans thought about the Greeks. What? Never mind. Let's get to work. Ah, they gave us a slip, Monty. What? You mean two old coots and a team and wagon got away from a half a dozen gun slicks? I don't know how they did it. We lost them about three miles east of here. Oh, Walter. That means they'll head for the nearest federal law. 
We'll have to move out of here tonight, get across the border. Yeah. Tell the boys to clean out the town. Load everything in the wagons. Keep the wall gates locked. Don't let anybody in or out, savvy? Sure. Hey, what about Bix? How's he feeling? Bix is all right. The old coot's bullet just creased his scalp. He's out guarding one of the gates. Oh, I'm glad it wasn't serious. Oh, oh, hello, Bix. Hi. Uh, now what's wrong? Yeah, nothing wrong. Just wanted to tell you about a local engine medicine man outside the east gate. Driving a flat bottom wagon with a big wooden horse bolted to it. Medicine man, wooden horse. What do I care about red skin malarkey like that? He wants to get in. Says the wooden horse is heap big medicine for them Kiowa engines camped inside the gate. I don't care what he says. Don't let him. Wait a minute, Bonnie. Those engines could cause us a lot of trouble before we leave if they went on a rampage. Better let them have that big medicine. Yeah, Monty. Redskins are superstitious. Besides that, the wooden horse has got me curious. All right, let him in. But I don't want anybody else slipping through those gates. Don't worry, I'll keep my eyes to you. You go with them, Huff. Get some wagons lined up like I told you. Sure. Bring in your wooden horse, medicine. Ah, get him up there. Get him up. Pull up right over there. Hold there. Hold. Close the gate, boys. It was almost midnight in the walled city of Rio Vegas, and Monty Steele's outlaw gang was busy loading wagons with stolen loot when Tonto moved quietly through the shadows toward a huge wooden horse. Kimasabi. Kimasabi. Tonto. Oh, uh, pull out nail. Move board. Thanks, Tonto. I was beginning to get pretty cramped in there. Where's Money Steele and the gang? In Mother End of Street, by jail. Good. Then we can get into Joshua's store without any trouble. Come on. Strike a match, Tonto. Keep it covered. Ah. Hmm. They certainly cleaned out Joshua's store. The thing left on the shelves. Uh, what we do now? Find the storeroom. Come on. Here it is. The window over there. How far is it from the river, Toto? River. Plenty close. You hear it? Good. Here are those 60 barrels of coal oil Joshua was talking about. Find a hammer or a hatchet and help me carry this barrel to the window. Uh, no, me help it. Uh, oh, ha- hammer on floor. Give it to me. Uh-uh. You pour oil in river? That's right. We're going to pour all 60 barrels of it into the river. We've got to hurry. There isn't much time. Barrel. Yes, I know it. Now, give me that torch you made out of those rags. Uh, Thanks. Light a match, Nataro. Uh-huh. Good. Let's hope it stays lit until it lands on the river. Give us hobby. River burn. The coal oil on top of the water. Ah, but how does this help catch crooks? The quickest way to get a message to Fort Craddock. A message that'll bring soldiers up here without asking questions. We wait here? No, Toto. We're going to open the gate and let the troopers in. And meet Joshua and Mr. Merriweather outside the wall. All right, come on. Hey, Monty! Monty, fire! The whole blame river's on fire! What the play, you loco? Come on outside and see! Well, I'll be... Somebody must have poured oil on it. the worst part of it, Monty. It's burning from here clear down to Fort Craddock. What'll those troopers do when they see it? I hear the bugle. That's what they'll do right up here. We can't get away through the south gate on kind of flyer. Well, what can we do? Tell every man to get a rifle. Climb the walls. We'll hold them all. Right. 
troopers are all loose here, Toto. Ah. We'll have to open the gates. Now, there are two guards there. You take the one on this side, and I'll take the other. Let's go. Ah. All right, you. Oh. Oh. Got it, Toto. Uh, me get him. Good. Now grab that chain. We can swing open the gates. Ah. Ah. The gates! Who opens the gates? They're coming inside! Blast them! Let them have it! Ken. All of these men are guilty of treason as well as outlawry. Put them in handcuffs and march them back to the fort. Yes, sir. Hi, right, Juniper, that's what I call real action. The troopers rolled right in and mopped them up. That's right. Didn't last very long either. Uh, where's the masked man? He and the Indian must have been the ones who opened the gates. Yeah? Oh, I sure wish we could find them somewhere in this crowd. Well, oh, I guess ain't much chance. I'll never know wait, who wait, that... Wait me. a minute, Joshua. Isn't that Monty Steele standing handcuffed over there by the wall? Sure. That's the skunk. <clears throat> I've got something to say to him. Come on. Don't blame me, Monty. I didn't Shut have... Shut up. Monty. Well, what do you want? Tell him, Merriweather. He'll never know it unless you tell him. Tell me what? Uh, just a suggestion, Monty. When you get time, I'd suggest you read a story. A certain story I think you'll enjoy. Yeah? Remember the name. It's called... The Siege of Troy. just heard is a copyrighted feature of the Lone Ranger Incorporated, 